So uh, welcome everybody uh, to the afternoon session and uh, our first speaker this afternoon uh, will be Sergei Dubovsky, who will tell us about uh, the world sheets scattering on Okay, good morning everyone and thanks for coming here. Uh, and as Igor said, we'll have a quite a few talks about confining strings. So this talk is kind of supposed to some extent to set the stage for these later talks and for the discussion, which will be led uh, by offer uh, later. Uh, but well, uh, no, it just worked a minute ago. Uh, this not working anymore. Huh? I can click on it first and then. Okay. Uh, let me start with thanking Simon's Foundation for kind of making this workshop and this whole adventure possible. This sounds exciting. Uh, now, I don't know, are there any Simon's people left? Yeah, there are. They may disagree with me, but well, I think this is a perfect moment to ask the following question. So, uh, can we done with the proposal, but we didn't start the project yet, but a small pause. And I'm sure uh, this group of smart people which we have here, well, it will produce a uh, large amount of high quality works and papers. Uh, but I think the ambition of Simon's Foundation, the expectation that it will be more than that. Uh, and clearly, it's a bit of a challenge. Well, uh, the subject has at least 50 years old history, and many very smart people were thinking about the problems. Uh, and uh, well, well, I should apologize. I should admit that while well, I'm somewhat, somewhat ignorant about nuclear physics, and actually I expect like one of the exciting for me outcomes of this proposal also would be to learn more about nuclear physics. But kind of the well, may ask the following question, which often been asked: so whether kind of the quest to understand confinement, uh, whether it has better chances to produce new fundamental insights than to say understand nuclear physics. And and what I mean here by nuclear physics is the like uh, rich subject with many hard dynamical questions, uh, but it sounds unlikely uh, that well, one can make progress on individual questions, but at least in my view, it sounds unlikely one can really do progress in fundamental physics addressing that, although I will be happy to, to be proven wrong. But I think it's clear what kind of question I'm trying uh, to ask here. And I think that's important to ask these questions kind of uh, before moving forward. Uh, and, uh, well, at least in my view, well, the best hope in the confinement case and uh, is that uh, is related to Toft Lagency limit, as already uh, also again uh, you saw uh, in the talk by Igor. So the observation is that uh, in the limit of a large number of colors, the kind of diagrammatic expansion can, uh, looks like a diagrammatic expansion in string theory uh, uh, to kind of Put it differently, uh, if you take a flux tube, confining flux tube, which is a kind of physical object which exists uh, in the theory, uh, and you consider its dynamics, and as this object self intersects, and in general, you expect kind of these two outcomes. So, can either go through or uh, break, and the uh, closed string may pinch off. And in the large and C limit, uh, this process is suppressed. And if you, th you think about it, it's quite a remarkable property. If you kind of, if we really had a something like large NC pure glue sector in the standard model, so this flux tube would be kind of physical things which can fluctuate in this room, uh, but for them uh, essentially uh, going through, through each other, with, kind of crossing each other without uh, uh, doing anything, like in some sense freely crossing each other, uh, well, that's uh, pr 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 pretty remarkable. Uh, so in one way to say it, uh, in that in the strict uh, top limit, uh, so first of all, kind of what this uh, observation tells us that the only dynamics which is left in this theory is the flux tube itself. So on the of the fluctuation of the flux tube itself, and uh, so and this flux tube it defines uh, really uh, microscopic uh, to geometric objects. So it describes a model of fluctuating geometry. So and in this sense. Uh, uh, this limit makes confining strings as fundamental, at least kind of if one thinks about it as a two-dimensional two geometric object, as fundamental as uh, uh, as critical strings. Uh, and well, in particular, you may think about uh, understanding confining strings in the large and limit is a, a rare opportunity to do experimental quantum gravity because well, 
Uh, by quantum gravity, here I mean again the just a theory of fluctuating 2D geometry. Of course, it's quantum gravity in two dimensions, but still, uh, that may be the best shot for a while for us to do actual uh, 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 experimental quantum gravity, where by experiment, I can here mean both kind of input from real world uh, data, but also from computer simulations. Uh, and well, uh, so think, thinking along these lines, uh, then uh, the uh, the most basic uh, and uh, natural set of observables is connected to Walsh dynamics. I mean, uh, you can, in, if you want, really things now in strict uh, planar limit, one can take infinitely long string and like consider fluctuations along the string and uh, look at the scattering. And this is a well defined, sharply defined set of observables. Uh, and uh, uh, kind of that's uh, will be the, the understanding of the set of observables uh, will be the subject of, of my talk. And also, as we'll see later on, uh, apart from kind of this uh, fundamental thing, theoretical interest, they also serve as a natural tool to relate and analyze lattice data. Uh, so, you know, what, what do we know uh, about these scattering amplitudes? Uh, so, well, first of all, uh, at lower energy, en low energies, uh, we think about QCD string or here because I'm thinking about planar limit for the reason just explained. Uh, really, I'm talking about pure glue uh, because, as Igor also mentioned, kind of fermions decoupled in the strict planar limit. Uh, so, at, at low energies, all what we have, we have a system of translational modes, uh, Goldstone bosons associated to the fact that the presence of a string breaks uh, spontaneous, uh, spontaneously break the translation variance. And so, at low energy, the universal low energy dynamics is described by. Number good action plus higher the terms in encapsulating like microscopic physics. Uh, and in principle, I may just go ahead and calculate the scattering logic, scattering amplitudes, uh, starting with number good action. Uh, actually, uh, the most technically efficient uh, uh, way to do that is to use what I call Polchinski Strominger action, uh, namely by using Polikov trick, one can. Uh, rewrite the action this way, then the Bogota part is equivalent to these two terms written here. The first term is the familiar Polakov action, and uh, this addition here, uh, it's uh, kind of, uh, well, it compensates for the fact that we're in non-critical number of dimensions. So this phi is a lot like a uh, Liouville field, but it's it's a composite operator in, 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 in the theory. Uh, and these higher high terms, again, they stand for non-universal terms in previous in principle present in the uh, also in the in the previous description. Uh, and this uh, in this level, uh, then uh, the three level scattering amplitudes, they all determined by just the product of term in the action, uh, and they correspond uh, to integrable phase shift. So at the level of uh, three level amplitudes, Nabugota theory classically, that's an integrable theory. Uh, and the corresponding phase shift well, it takes this simple form where S is Mandel's sum S of colliding particles. Uh, so, and in particular, that's the, that's all what it is there in critical string theory on, in the, this limit we are talking about. This is exact phase shift of, of critical uh, critical strings. Uh, and uh, this second universal term, it serves as a generating function for all universal one loop amplitudes of okay, the so solving those sort of constraints. Uh, and one can, as I said, one can reproduce them by direct diagrammatic calculation, but that's uh, uh, that's a trick which allows to obtain all these amplitudes in, in one step. And in particular, when one is not is non critical dimension, with D is not equal to 26, and three is another exception, which will be somewhat important later. Uh, so if one D is not equal to 26 and three, these amplitudes are non trivial and lead to particle production. So they uh, classical solvability of Nambugota theory is broken by this universal quantum effects. Uh, so, uh, well, this, depending on how you view things, that may be considered bad news and good news. So, bad news is Polchit theory is non integrable. So, even in the strict planar limit. So, that means there is no real, like, it will never happen. I think it's solving Lajengan meals. That's something which will never happen because even in the strict planar limit, there is still kind of one left with non-integrable dynamics. So there is no kind of, it, it cannot be really solved. Uh, I think there is a very interesting question whether there are uh, uh, kind of maybe uh, deformed theories that are confining models with 
integrable load shift dynamics. We have by now we have uh, beautiful examples like n equal super superior meals where load shift dynamics is integrable. Uh, but this bullshit dynamic, this series is not confined, it's conformal. So this when we bullshit, bullshit dynamics there, we mean uh, bullshit dynamics of strings propagating in the do ADS space. So it will be very interesting to confine confining models uh, like that or to prove that it's impossible. Uh, but well, good news is that well, this bullshit theory is non-integrable. So if I want to think about this as a kind of toy model uh, for quantum gravity. Oh, it's, it's somewhat a rich model of quantum gravity. So it's non integrable there is particle production. So it's more interesting in that sense than just Wolchitz theory of uh, critical state, which we also call a theory of quantum gravity. And actually, we did it at some point, but I think people, many people would disagree. And the basic reason is exactly that. So there is uh, no particle production there. OK, so that's the story which one finds at low energies. And well, uh, as Igor already said, uh, so also clear. So there are a really interesting question. Again, especially if one thinks about this as a model of quantum gravity, what happens on the wall sheet at high energies? Uh, and is this kind of again the fact that we took first the planar limit allows to, to, me to talk about uh, high energy limit on the wall sheet uh, because it's completely decoupled from, from the bulk dynamics. Uh, and uh, so here there are two at first sight, conflicting pieces of intuition. So, so what, what expectations which might, might put forward. So first is kind of, again, very generically, if this is something like two-dimensional quantum gravity, then in quantum gravity, well, we expect that high energy scattering is dominated by some sort of black hole-ish objects. Uh, and they typically lead uh, to quote part part soft particle production. Uh, that's kind of one piece of intuition. Another piece of intuition, well, that the uh, asymptotic freedom of underlying gauge theory suggests uh, that high energy scattering may in some sense be integrable. And let me elaborate on this piece of intuition. Uh, namely, that's, that would be a cartoon for high energy wall sheet scattering. So uh, and basically the point is, if you think, one way to think about this confining string is it interior of heavy quark mesons. So you can put two like Q, Q bar pair, stretch them far, 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 far apart. There is Flux cube in between them, and kind of what we're studying, we're studying excitation of this meson. Uh, and well, at high energies, we kind of know what we expect to find, what degrees of freedom we expect to find there. We expect to find partons of underlying uh, underlying gauge theory. So, in particular, if I'm talking about pure glue, well, the high energy degrees of freedom, they should can, we should be able to think about them just as gluons inserted in this uh, flux tube. And think about the scattering from that point of view. Well, then you take two gluons whose uh, color uh, flux is neutralized by the presence of the flux tube. You collide them, there is hard collision, but if we really high energies, that means like because of symptotic freedom, not really much happens here. They essentially go through each other. Uh, but because I'm in strict planar limit, the string doesn't break, it's, it keeps being stretched. Uh, and so uh, they propagate uh, for a while and then they will be turned back and uh, uh, and uh, fly back. Uh, so one gets a phase shift from here and this uh, uh, time delay, which comes from, from this phase shift, this phase shift corresponds exactly to this E to the S scattering, which I mentioned. It's just a statement that there is a phase shift time delay proportional to the collision energy. Uh, but this kind of suggests, well, well that because hard collision is essentially free, it suggests that one that there is some, some element of integrability here. So it's not a free theory because there is a phase shift, but on the other hand, particle production, this hard particle production is suppressed. So that's kind of the set. Yes. Wouldn't that picture make you think there'd be a lot of energy in soft particles after the collision? Because when it snaps back, it looks like there will be a strong wave on each side. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. So here, yeah. I'm, uh, coming to my next slide. So yeah, arguably, I think yeah, as Ed pointed, pointed out, I think there is no contradiction between these two pieces of, of intuition. Uh, and uh, so I think on one hand side, I think that argument which I just described suggests that kind of for suitably defined kind of inclusive observables, there, there is some uh, integrable story. Uh, but on the other hand, well, zigzag itself, provide a natural candidate for black hole. So for instance, for, for something like a black hole, meaning kind of the semi-classical object which exists for a long time, 
And there is this long period when at the exact endpoints it move with acceleration. So there is a natural, yeah. So one might expect that lead, that there is some actually calculable dynamics which leads to some copy of soft particle production in, 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 in this event. And I think so. I think that's addresses that's exactly the point which you made, right? So yeah, so that, that's that's the expectation. And uh, well, currently, while well, with Sasha that look and Philip of by exploring several ideas, kind of analy get analytic control over this. Uh, so basically, kind of the one idea is essentially to use to work with this for the of Palchinsky's theorem interaction and find some kind of analog of something like CGHS black hole there. So that zigzag would correspond to something like that. Uh, and so there, I think there is a hope that one might kind of get the analytic control for this. Uh, soft particle production. Is exactly a sharply defined concept. Say if you uh, well, for long string, it is. But there is an issue. Like, like for the exact as I draw, there is an issue of endpoints, and there is a, there is a singularity there. Uh, but uh, for example, in the joint QCD, are you working when in the limit of large joint mass, or where is it? Well, here I really was thinking about pure glue, pure. but but one can do yeah in the, yeah for, yeah for, actually that's a good point for the models where there is some analytic control over this picture. So, for instance, in 2D a joint QCD with a heavy quark mass, then uh, like many elements of the story, they can can make more precise. And they lead, like, uh, they lead actually to integrable in the high, like, uh, uh, they lead to inter interesting integrable relativistic n body system, which de de defines uh, kind of uh, this leading zigzag story. In that case, zigzag, everything is stretched along the line. Uh, and uh, in principle, one may hope to go further and now to calculate particle production because it's beyond this leading order approximation. Uh, that's kind of another idea which one has, but here I, I didn't want to be necessarily in two dimensions. This picture, uh, in principle, well, uh, it's, it looks more universal also place to four dimensions. Uh, but uh, uh, in the remaining time, uh, rather I will spend some time re reviewing kind of some knowledge which we have from lattice data. Uh, as well because I think it will nicely illustrate kind of what this collaboration can do by combining effects efforts from theorists and lattice people. And, uh, and I will argue that also from lattice data, it seemed to support kind of both, both pieces of intuition. Uh, so uh, let me start from kind of uh, the, the second uh, expectation that there is some element of integrability at high energies. Uh, and uh, well, this is kind of this at least a current summary of the structure of all sheet theory, which follows from analyzing data, which also will be I guess next talk will be uh, by Andreas that will probably show a slide like this. Uh, but the short summary is from uh, lattice studies of long string that uh, what one finds in four dimensions, one finds an addition to you know, two masses, Goldstone, uh, Goldstone bosons. Data shows the presence of additional massive to the scalar particle, which uh, was called Wolchit axion. Uh, and well, they, there is a mass of this particle with string units, which is extracted from, from data and the leading coupling constant. Uh, that's just uh, this operator. Uh, and in three dimensions, uh, the, up to now, there is no sign of any additional massive particle. So actually it, it looks like the, uh, the only mold present on the wall sheet is just a Goldstone mold. Uh, and so interestingly, uh, the, in both cases, this is a matter of content of possible integrable model. Namely, if this uh, uh, pseudo-scalar guy, if it were massless, then it turns out that in four dimensions, one can construct theory uh, with uh, this particle content, two Goldstone bosons and pseudo-scalar uh, 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 massless particle with the same phase shift as for critical strings, which is compatible with uh, non-linearized Poincare symmetries. In other words, sorry, it, it was, uh, well, so yeah, that's the second that's the second point here that's in four dimensions. Uh, so in other words, the presence of this massless to the scalar particle allows to cancel this universal particle production I was talking before. And in three dimensions, I already mentioned. So in three dimensions, in principle, this uh, universal particle production is actually absent. Uh, this amplitude vanish for uh, 
uh, universal one loop amplitudes vanish for kinematical reasons. So also in three dimensions, there is a uh, uh, of a single mass scalar with the spaceship, which is compatible with target space bound carrier. So that's kind of one piece of numerology, if you wish. Uh, and in four dimensions, there is another piece of numerology that actually the leading uh, kind of the cup, the pseudo scalar interaction uh, of this pseudo scalar as required by integrability takes this value, which within uh, error bars uh, inside, which was which was was measured on the lattice, and and that would be it would be very interesting to uh, narrow these error bars and to see uh, whether uh, this is uh, uh, this uh, coincidence is kind of uh, whether it's coincidence or there is more to that. Uh, but uh, kind of motivated by uh, this coincidence. Uh, and uh, we put forward kind of the structural ansatz for the theory in both three and four dimensions, which we called axionic string ansatz, like, well, thanks to axion, which already shown only present in four dimensions, which is basically the statement that kind of the full Wolchitz theory uh, is kind of is a in deformation of, or in some sense, it should be considered as a deformation of uh, these and, and integrable models. Uh, and it has correct meta, meta content, so some suggestive. Numerology, and I should say that at D equal three, these proposals seem to be well supported by also analysis of the global spectrum. We will be talked by Shrestad Zari uh, reviewing uh, this part of the story. Uh, well, and the major, very interesting challenge here is to find kind of useful Walsh deduction uh, description for these integrable models. Uh, and there will be a uh, talk by Victor where he uh, will describe some of some ideas which we had uh, along those lines. And I should say that, well, in some sense, this, this answer provides a very simple structural description of what of the Walsh theory, which a posteriori one could come up kind of without uh, any lattice data and without thinking much. It's, it's really the simplest possible in, in, ex, uh, expectation. So if you think like in D equal four, uh, so drink is created by kind of Polakov loop operator. And the simplest thing one can do one like, to create elementary excitation on the wall sheet, one introduces uh, 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 field strengths inside inside the loop uh, on, in the lattice language kind of attaches plaquettes to the loop. And so plaquette attached like that, that corresponds to uh, Goldstone mode and plaquette attached in the transverse plane. That's exactly the operator with correct quantum numbers to to have this axion, and in three dimensions, one can only attach plaquette from the side. So uh, that's uh, uh, that's only uh, uh, Goldson mode. So in this in this language, really, this axion is is kind of another polarization of a gluon, uh, which which is there because Lorentz symmetry kind of is very broken by the presence of the string. So if one thinks about that in this language, it will be almost surprising if there were additional modes in the whole sheet. Because this can be interpreted as gluons, but if one has something else, well, that means it's, some, it's something else. So it means there are partons which are not which are not gluons. Uh, but because this is not a proof, and uh, we 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 not we only came up with this intuition a posteriori. But I think it just it provides a kind of useful piece of intuition how to think uh, about these degrees of freedom uh, and good, good starting point. Uh, so I kind of leave the integrable part of the story here. Uh, Say Victor will tell more about that. Uh, but now in the remaining part of, of the talk, I will let you through kind of exercise uh, again by looking at the lattice data, uh, suggesting also kind of this uh, that there is actually part particle production, kind of quite extensive particle production present uh, on the vault sheet, which kind of the second. So supporting the second piece of intuition. And uh, well, the reason I, I want to do this because is that I think this exercise is really kind of illustration of things we can do together, but much kind of more better level, hopefully, with, uh, by combining like efforts of different communities. And, and it's fun. So it's it will be entirely about 3D young mills. Uh, so again, I'm using data from uh, 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 Andres and Mike Tepper. And uh, so it will be kind of what we'll be doing. We'll be looking at these two sets of data. So what's shown here? Uh, these are uh, so the, the, this, all these plots. They show on the horizontal axis is the length of a string. Uh, so one looks at the uh, compact string like circles, circles which wrapped around compact dimension in a lattice. So one wraps 
uh, this thing around the lattice. And one looks at the excitation energies as a function of the uh, side of this circle. And here I subtracted the leading uh, linearly growing piece so that the structure uh, is better seen. So that you shouldn't be surprised you don't see string tension because that piece is, is being subtracted here. And so what's shown on the left plot, uh, that uh, corresponds. So as I told you, in, in, in three dimensions, one doesn't see uh, the indication for any additional massive states uh, on, on the world sheet. So kind of these states can be understood in the Tambugota language. Right? And so this state that correspond to uh, two particle uh, 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 Nambugota excitation, like two particles with opposite momenta, with lowest KK momenta. And uh, this, two, this pair of states that correspond to two particle with double KK momentum and four particle with single KK momentum. So these are two and four particle states. Uh, and these are instead three particle states. So there is one uh, uh, mode with momentum, which is twice the minimal one and two. Uh, with the minimal moving so there are also states with zero zero momentum that you don't draw here or but no these are all so the total momentum is yeah no, but even for individual ones you could have zero momentum right so no but these are massless these are massless particles oh, so, okay. so, so, but, yeah. so the total momentum is zero but yeah. Uh, but yeah so this, this, and here we have two states corresponding kind of two symmetric and then uh, anti-symmetric uh, linear combination of this uh, the things that well, these are really the same piece of data, but here the better quality data. But uh, 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 okay, so but the, you see these plots. I'll explain uh, soon what what are the lines here. But the zeros are the question is how to interpret this data, uh, and it's uh, somewhat non-trivial. Uh, so so that was like this simulation provides for us. It provides this finite volume spectra, uh, and well at low energies. Meaning which corresponds to long strings. Uh, so when, what one can try to do, one can try to in, interpret this uh, uh, the spectra using EFT, EFT description. So for, for that, one needs to come up with prediction of finite volume uh, spectra using EFT description. Uh, and well, and there are several ways how one can do it. For instance, the most straightforward approach would just, you complexify the theory on a, on a circle. Uh, you get a serial bunch of KK modes. And you just do a less over R expansion. Uh, but that expansion is known to have very bad uh, convergence properties. Uh, and well, it's known, well known for lattice people. Actually, this, this whole problem is a classic problem in lattice field theory of connecting the, uh, uh, the uh, Euclidean of finite volume spectra to uh, scattering amplitudes. Uh, and is a regime when one can neglect uh, elasticity, meaning in high, high dimensions, it's really for two to two scattering below multi particle threshold, or in two dimensions where we now, uh, if the theory is approximately integrable, uh, then uh, one, it can be done uh, using like asymptotic beta as equation, which is what's community known as Lusher equations, which essentially is a statement that in the presence of non trivial phase shift, one compactifies. Like the quantization condition for momenta is modified in this way. One defines this, one finds this momenta and calculates the spectrum using those momenta. And kind of naive LS of our expansion corresponds to uh, linearizing this equation in, in phase shift, uh, which, uh, well, which maybe when the phase shift grows, it's not a good idea to do that way. Uh, well, in, usually in, in lattice, one kind of thinks in the context of a theory which has a mass gap. Where this is good enough, but in the context where here we have massless particles, so one needs to account uh, for binding corrections. And in the, again, in the integrable approximation that can be accomplished using thermodynamic beta ansatz, which is kind of exact extension of asymptotic beta ansatz, which also accounts for binding number, uh, numbers. But if we want to extract elasticities from this data, then it's now sounds quite challenging. So, kind of the challenge here kind of to extend this approach. To allow perturbatory to allow to include non elasticity. And that's, I think, one of the questions which again relates. It's uh, it's interesting QFT problem, but also important for, for lattice. So that's one of the problems we can make progress on. Uh, but uh, here for, for strings, there is a uh, kind of nice trick which allows to this postpone full uh, consideration of this problem for later. Which is the following. So let's parameterize the full S matrix, full S, S matrix in this way. 
So that's the full one. And let's pull out this factor where PL and PR, PR is a total left and right moving momentum. And that S, what's called SU here, that S matrix of what I will be calling under S theory. And well, uh, so this relation between two S matrices, this, this relation is nothing else but what became known uh, the last few years as a TT bar deformation. So the T, this full theory written here is a uh, TT bar deformation of uh, Andres theory. Uh, and thanks to uh, Smirnov Zemologica and uh, Cavalli et al., we know the exact relation between finite volume spectra of these two theories. Namely, uh, kind of one needs to solve this hydrodynamic equation. It's, uh, so here, uh, L is corresponds to this deformation parameter. So one starts with uh, undeformed series initial condition, and then to find the full uh, spectrum, one needs to solve this equation and uh, uh, up to value of L equal to L S squared. Uh, so kind of the again the trick which allows to postpone addressing this problem hard problem of uh, understanding finite volume spectrum uh, for for a string is that one can uh, kind of account for elasticity in the address theory uh, perturbatively using a less over expansion in the address theory, uh, but account, but uh, then to do exactly this step, the step of dressing. And the reason it's useful for, especially for D for three strings is the following, uh, because this dressing, it accounts for kind of all three level and one loop contributions, just because it captures all, 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 all Nambugota dynamics. So in other words, the action from this theory, kind of if one goes through the steps, it writes, starts with Nambugota and writes actual action for, Nambu, uh, for the Andres theory, it will be there, it will be free, free, free massless boson. Uh, and then there will be very high dimensional operator with, may, with many derivatives. Uh, and all kind of the leading order uh, pieces, they already count, ex counted exactly. And kind of in the initial Nambugota language that corresponds so this uh, parameter here, gamma, which characterizes the strengths of these interactions, it corresponds to adding some sort of term like R squared term in the Nambugot action. Uh, but because kind of it's very high uh, dimensional operator, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, then uh, kind of one may hope that uh, kind of this less over expansion, it will it will break down later when uh, uh, kind of one accounts for leading or dividing corrections and. Uh, yeah, um, due to this way. Uh, so uh, applying this technique to these two and four particle states, then one finds uh, the uh, the corresponding phase shift, like uh, the, this, one finds the best fit value for this parameter gamma, uh, so which corresponds to this uh, 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 this correction to the phase shift, which well we can see from this plot it works. Uh, for quite uh, for long string it works, but then for short strings it breaks down, uh, and kind of one can see also that's kind of what's nice about ABA. Where you see, uh, so this this green points these are four particle states, uh, which are correspond to softer quanta. So one is not surprised that uh, this break works towards for low, low, lower uh, values of R here because for this green state they correspond to smaller momenta than for uh, blue states, which are uh, two particle states with logic key okay, momentum. But and actually one can invert this logic, uh, and namely assuming that one can neglect elasticity, one can go backwards. One may use this finite volume spectra, and that's what lattice people do, and extract phase shift directly without zero input. Uh, and so that's the result which, which comes here. So this dashed line is there uh, just leading on the phase shift. Uh, the red line, this uh, so blue line that's P, P squared by P, P to the six, and kind of red line that's the best fit which one gets from uh, kind of th this backward extraction. And one can see, but well, there is some indication, maybe what I was saying before, that there is a kind of violation from integrable phase shift in this range, but then it kind of it looks like the red line, well, one shouldn't look here because it was just polynomial fit, but the points here, uh, it looks like uh, it may be going back to integrable asymptotics. Because I mean, one can also see on this plot. So that this splittings that just end up just go go back to Nambugota values. So that's kind of the story from which one obtains by looking at two particle four particle states. Uh, now let's look at three particle states. Uh, and so first of all, here here they seem to exhibit the opposite tendency. And I should really look at this right plot where the better quality data is shown. 
Namely, at low energies, it looks like the splitting between these two three particle states, it gets much larger. And it's important to point, point out that this, this splitting, it provides really direct probe of non elasticity. Uh, because, so these are, as I said, these are two states uh, which are linear combination of like 2p minus p minus p and minus p minus p 2p. So just changing the phase shift wouldn't introduce splitting. Uh, between them. So, kind of, uh, so what the lines here, the dashed black line, that's the denoter number of approximation. And this orange dashed line, that's the prediction for both energies. If one just modifies phase shift uh, by using two and four particle inputs. Uh, but to get the splitting, one needs to include proper six part contact, six particle amplitude. So, it's not just modification of the phase shift. Uh, this six particle amplitude is present because, as you see, that this is four particle operator, but there is three particle operator with the same coefficient because they all come from R squared term. So in principle, we know that there is uh, this six, six particle amplitude here, uh, but uh, kind of if one tries try to use, uh, and so uh, what uh, this green and blue line show, they show the splittings which one would expect by, uh, Kind of using that source of inelasticity, which is present, is, which follows from leading other phase shift. And it kind of works for long strings, but for short strings, the actual splitting is dramatically larger. Uh, and so then what we did, we tried to follow the same logic. We tried, okay, just uh, estimate uh, go, going uh, back from this data to estimate non elasticity, which uh, uh, you can in model dependent way to estimate elasticity, which is present in the theory that gives an estimate of three to three amplitude for a contact interaction, by, but by uh, crossing symmetry that also determines two to four interaction. And so uh, this is the result. So phrase is the probability of two to four particle production in the scattering. So this blue line, that would what would correspond to just using uh, that elasticity. Yeah, I'm about to finish, which, which we know uh, present in the theory from, from, from uh, R squared operator. And one sees that from the data, one actually one finds that the actual elasticity seems to be much, much larger than that. It's still, it's, it's not, it's a small number. So it's not like dramatic. It's at the level of few percent at, at this moment, but it looks like there is, the theory is much more inelastic than just naive perturbation theory suggests. And so, so that's a uh, kind of indication of towards what I was saying in the beginning, that there is a source of copious, probably growing high energy particle production in this theory. So this is my last slide. So clearly there is this analysis is very preliminary, both from the point of view of the room to improve the lattice data, but just for me, uh, clearly there are lots of uh, theory steps here, which one would uh, want to straighten out and uh, clear, clear up. And I, I hope uh, that's, that, that looks like one of the things where uh, this collaboration can be really, really uh, useful for. Uh, and so there are, uh, I think this example is great. There are lots of problems which uh, we can address. Uh, and to complete the triangle and kind of add phenomenology here, of course, one would like to extend, extend this analysis to four dimensions, in particular to relate to global spectra. So again, there will be a talk on Saturday by Sharzad Zari. So uh, she'll talk mostly about 3D story, but also mention ongoing work in 4D, but uh, where it's more, more complicated, but more interesting. Okay, thank you. Uh, the first one, so, so can you remind me in three dimensions, what's the, what's the next term after this curvature square term? It already has all variables or persistent time? Well, it's, it will be tomorrow, it's P, P to the eight term. This, this correction to the P, P, P to the six, and then, yeah, yeah there will be yeah. PBR, right? And, and that can be cleanly separated from these P to the six terms in the, in the regime that you're working in, and it's built well enough that. Uh, you can it. Well, it's uh, it depends. Well, essentially, it's, it's, it's usual kind of one needs to make a cut, right? So it's kind of when one looks at the points at large R here, they're dominated by that where, where can, if, if the expansion one expects to converge well. So we see that at some point it breaks down, 
but yeah, one, one way to test this, in some sense, that's kind of this, what this plot provides. So uh, what, what, uh, what this red line is, this is the feed to the full data, just the, uh, using polynomial, uh, general polynomial feed with high, high, uh, higher uh, powers as it. And one may, may compare whether kind of P to the, P to the six uh, coefficient in this more general feed, whether it uh, consistent with what one gets from uh, like do doing this FT calculation. That's one test for that. And so it, 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 so one, naively one would think already p or the one, it doesn't work, but there are factors of two pi's as usual in coming from loops. So that's, uh, if, you, uh, if you can hear, I normalize this coefficient gamma over two pi squared that corresponds to the following. So kind of there is some extra piece of numerology here. I told you that this coefficient in the phase shift is related to kind of adding high dimensional operator like that. But uh, really if one even starts with Nambugota and depending on calculational scheme, one also gets contribution there. So, for instance, this is the value we just take number got action and calculate with MS bar scheme. That's that, that, that's to loop, to, to loop calculation. That would correspond to value of gamma equal to this, which happens to coincide with the narrow bars to actual extraction. I don't know whether there is any problem. There is nothing, no physics about that because who cares about MS, MS calculation? But so it's just a sanity check order of magnitude. The value of gamma is of order what one expects from kind of doing to loop calculation. Uh, and yeah, so that kind of gives us another feeling for in what range of momentum we trust this calculation where it breaks down. So, yes. So, the potential hope is to uh, find to go to keep going to the next order is, is well, that's or, it's, or to find some kind of uh, formula that would predict the general. Well, I think that's a challenge for collaboration because, uh, like as Igor said. Like Andreas and Mike, like a lot of these people, they keep measuring the spectra with high and high precision. But the question is, how do we extract information from there? And I said that that's that spectrum in principle is a finite volume spectrum of some 2D model of quantum gravity. And kind of the most interesting part here is this here. And we need to develop techniques to, to for these simulations to be useful. We need to learn kind of how to ex extend these methods and really kind of probe UV of the theory. Uh, yeah, that's that, that's the hope, and kind of what I was showing here, it's kind of baby step in the direction. But uh, yeah, that's is the data sufficient to go to the next order? Uh, well, I'm not yeah, I, because ideally one wants to kind of I think one wants really to do something like that. One the dent at high energies, one doesn't care about action. One doesn't care about kind of uh, these high dimensional operators. One wants to directly extract physical quantities. Uh, and, uh, and what's done here, it's the neglecting of elasticity, but so the challenge is kind of to uh, to develop, to push, push this forward that one can consistently go from lattice data to extracting uh, S matrices. And kind of that, that will provide a picture of what's going on. Uh, uh, in principle, yeah, if, with high precision, one can also kind of look at this part of the spectra and extract coefficients of high dimensional operators. But I think like, it's more interesting really to see the shape, uh, the actual shape of the amplitudes uh, than coefficients of high, dim of high dimensional operators. Yes, sir. Yes, sorry, I had my mask on. Yeah, yeah so I, I was very intrigued by this picture you showed the zigzag mm -hmm. of the, the string mm -hmm. with this, this copious structure yeah. of, say, soft gluons. Yeah. Uh, but what I missed was how the coupling of this these soft ones to the to the, uh, to the charge and this zigzag string. You know, how does that that's, that describe? Well, that that's one of the subtlety which we're dealing with because uh, right. So this picture there is clearly well there is a zigzag itself. There is a fold here, so there is a singularity there, and uh, that's. Part well, it's in principle that's some universal physics. But the hope is that uh, there is a should be, and that's what we're trying to see that there is. Uh, and well, that's carries some information about UV structure this theory. And actually, one needs to think when I'm thinking about globals, which are like it's for instance, linear trajectory described by kind of folded 
string, and that falls also present there. So Xilan needs eventually to understand also the physics of, 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 of this of the singularities. But here the hope is that there, there should be there is some part of particle production, as it's usually the case in gravity. So there is some aspect of particle production related to soft, soft, really soft ones, which is independent of kind of microscopics of how one does this zigzag. And that's because the intuition, because there is long process in time. Uh, this guy moves with acceleration, so there should be some universal soft. Uh, soft contribution, which is in the, uh, which is not sensitive. Right. Uh, to I mean, this, this gives the idea of some kind of ordering and rapidity, which is like an ordering of time. Right. Exactly. So basically, or yeah, or in, in other words, kind of I had this ansatz, uh, which was useful here uh, for the full S matrix. Here it was just calculation of two. So we, in this factorized term, but there is a physics in there. So this. But this factorized term here is exactly it's the fact that there is a time delay which which comes so this the ordering in time corresponds to factorization and so that the expectation is that actually there could be so that's literally corresponds to the bar deformation but the expectation that for actual qcd string there could be another factorized piece which corresponds also to some kind of universal particle production and which is more interesting than just the bar because there is some elasticity there but exactly that's kind of the s matrix way of saying it so there should be some uh, hopefully, there is some factorizations which which can uh, which correspond to that picture with zigzag. Right. Could you go back to that data? Sorry, where? The last data. Oh uh, well, this one. Yeah. I don't know. Later. The last one. Yeah, that no, just before. One back. One yeah. What are the points going up? Making, uh, These ones. Well, that yeah, so they correspond. That's good. They correspond to kind of these points that were the very short strings. Uh, so yeah, and well, really we don't. There could be different things. Either that's already very close to like phase transition and something funky happens there, or maybe well because still winding corrections kind of they are on, only uh, approximately counted for here. So clearly, well, we we kind of we we these are the shortest strings. So we we don't we don't understand those. So maybe. So, and that's again, that's something to understand. So, first, there is a question to Lattice, our Lattice friends. So, whether really this, this, all these levels, they, 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 they show this effect. Is it intrinsic property of the Walsh dynamics? If so, that, then we need to understand what it is, or it's related to because one is very close to, uh, to phase transition. But basically, now analysis, we're just ignoring those, those points. Clearly, as this plot, you know, also this plot illustrates. We just don't understand them, right? So they're completely off, right? So, yeah, but. Yeah, so probably we should postpone further questions to the discussion session in the afternoon. So thanks for getting in.